All right. Welcome back to Fit Body Secrets. I am Coach Cheryl. Today I have awesome client, Miss Annie on, and I am here to talk to you guys a little bit. Well, I'm not talking to you. I want Annie to talk to you guys all a little bit about her journey in her own health and fitness and also how she's taking that journey and bringing it into a whole new direction in her life and stuff like that. So uh, just to kind of get the role started, I want to go in um, the episode started, blah, 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 is I want to just kind of tell you guys um, Annie is actually the winner of my last AMRAP challenge. So she was every week we had, um, you know, I had given them all a spreadsheet and I gave them, you know, instructions and I told them what to do. And I was kind of looking in on people's stuff. And I was like, I remember talking to the other coaches and like being like, Annie is like every week she's on it. Like she's so mindful of everything. And it was like, I knew I wanted her to be the winner. Like she would put everything in there, like the details and and that to me was some that's like, I want results. And I, I have, I know that self-awareness is what is going to get me that. And that's so awesome. So um, I just want to kind of share that a little bit because Annie, you, you crushed the challenge and you continue to crush your nutrition despite having a lot of things happen and adversity wise in your holiday season and all that stuff. So I'm going to open up the floor to you, Annie. And I want you to kind of start by, start by talking about a little bit about maybe, I don't know, maybe your journey with uh, nutrition and fitness and fat loss and, and your overall body composition mm -hmm. from a young age to where you are now. Okay. Um, well, starting when I was younger, I was, um, I was always one of the heavier kids, but I was athletic. I was a swimmer. I was a swimmer all through high school and even did a little bit of swimming in college. Um, <clears throat> but I was always one of the bigger girls and I played tennis in high school as well. And I remember that the, um, I remember getting upset because the tennis skirts that the school provided didn't fit me. So I had to get my own or have it made. Um, so I've always been on the larger side. Um, I, I think I remember my mom even telling stories when, when I was like really little kindergarten and whatnot that I wanted to go on diet pills because I wanted to lose weight. And it, I mean, I don't recall that, but I'm thinking about that. It's just, it amazes me that as a child, I could feel that way. Um, I didn't have any girls, so I, but if I had, I would have instilled in them, you know, a love for their body and what their body can do. And um, as opposed to trying to fit into um, the stereotype. Um, but yeah, so I, I've always been like that. And then, you know, life happened, um, things happened in my life in my, um, early twenties that I kind of let things get away from me. Um, I ended, I, I became pregnant. Um, I was still in college. Uh, I did finish college, but between working nights and going to school and raising a newborn and then a toddler and, um, my health did not, it was not my priority at the time. And then things happened in my mid twenties that I kind of just stopped caring. Um, I ended up having another child and um, there was, I mean, drama associated with the father who wasn't involved. Um, so I kind of stopped caring about myself at all. Um, I, Probably, you know, if I if I went back and examined things, I, I probably really disliked myself, probably hated myself. And um, during a number of years between my mid twenties and my thirties, I somewhere in there, I, I ended up getting up to four hundred pounds. Um, in my mid thirties, probably about thirty five, thirty six, I had an aha moment, an uh, oddest. Thing of all, I, I was watching a Dr. Oz show and it wasn't the show itself that brought on this aha moment. It was a mother who had lost maybe 20 pounds and she, they were talking about the improvements in her vital statistics, statistics and her energy levels and, you know, being able to play with her kids and being around to watch them grow up. And that is what brought on the aha moment. And so here I was, I was 35, 36, I weighed 400 pounds. My father died of um, a cerebral aneurysm because of hypertension and diabetes when he was 42. That was 
six, seven years away. And um, so I decided that I wanted to make a change for me and my kids. Um, primarily at that time, it was for my kids. But through the journey, I learned that it was for me too. Um, I started out doing Weight Watchers online. I was still, I was working 12 hour shifts. I'm a nurse, um, kids active and travel soccer. So I didn't have time to go to meetings and whatnot. So I did the online program and I did that for um, probably about two years. I started out doing home workout videos. They were 10 minute dance home workout videos. <laughs> and I would do a couple of them at a time. Um, then when it got nice out, so, so that would have been January of 2010 when all of this started. Um, and then I progressed to um, like the biggest loser workout videos, Zumba onto um, the insanity videos. Um, well then around that time, I got a new job. I was working day shift Monday through Friday, some weekends, some holidays, some on call. Uh, but I, there was a, a YMCA down the road from my office. So I ended up getting a membership there and I was doing spin classes and like some circuit classes, Zumba, um, kickboxing, and then lifting weights in the gym. After about a year of that, I started um, working with a, uh, a personal trainer who was a bikini model um, and did uh, bikini competitions, physique, um, ended up following like a bodybuilder diet during that time. Um, not macros, but like you have this much protein at each meal, this much um, carbs, this much vegetables and fats. Um, so very similar, but um, slightly different. And um, Probably, oh, I don't, I'm not quite sure how long I worked with her, but a friend of mine who was in the Air Force mentioned CrossFit and said, you should check out CrossFit. So I, I watched some videos of the games and I'm like, oh my gosh, like that I can get into. Yeah. <laughs> so I had asked her about um, doing some, you know, programming some CrossFit style workouts. You know, I told her, I go, what you do is amazing. And even if I look like you, I still don't know that I can get on a stage in a bikini and heels, I, I just, it's, that is not there. And I don't think that it's ever going to be there for me. <laughs> um, I go, but I see a CrossFit competition and that I could see myself doing. So at, she was like, okay, well, let me look at things. Um, and then she came back um, and she's like, okay, so I can do this if you really want me to. I am just going to tell you that it is not my area of expertise. I have friends who just opened a gym and I would prefer to refer you to them. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. And so she gave me contact information and um, I did some foundational, one-on-one um, -on -one foundational because I couldn't make it to the foundations classes that they had scheduled. And um, then my first official workout was Murph on Memorial Day. Um, and I was doing a lot of running at that time. So it did not seem as bad as, and of course I, you know, I, I did the air squats. I did modified push-ups, I did ring rows um, and the runs were the easy part for me. So, uh, cause I was doing half marathons, <laughs> but not now I hate running, <laughs> but, um, and I thought, you know, like this is it. And even the gym owners at the time they they, you know, they tell, they would, say, you know, we could see in your eyes that you absolutely love this. Yeah. So then when I um, found CrossFit, you know, they, they were doing paleo challenges at the time. So I got involved in that. And um, over, so when I first started CrossFit, I actually, I was right around the 200 pound mark. And I actually gained 20 pounds um, within probably six months after I started doing CrossFit, but I could still see differences in my body that wasn't there. And I'm like, okay, so this is, it's okay. I still need to lose weight, but um, it's okay. Cause I can tell, I can see things and I can feel things and I'm lifting more. And um, so I think mindset regarding the number on the scale was starting to shift at that point. And CrossFit brought that to me. Um, I ended up taking a management position where I was working and um, increased stress and less attention to my diet ended up 
causing, I, I went from 200, somewhere in the low 200 to another 255. I was back to 255. I, that's kind of the number I tend to go back to yeah. when I regain weight. Um, and so in probably 2015, I, um, some friends had started um, doing nutrition coaching um, and counting macros. And a couple of them ended up becoming coaches themselves. So I started coaching with them. Um, and 2016, I got down to 170, between 170 and 180. Um, pro so probably about an average of 175. And that was also my best year in the open. Um, I placed in the top 1300 in the world in my age division. And um, uh, I was like, you know, yeah, next year I'm going to get in the top thousand. That's what I want to do. <laughs> um, and at that time, I still felt like I needed to lose more weight that, um, which I really probably didn't need to lose more weight. I just needed to maintain there and, um, be more consistent and probably just change body, continue to change body composition, get stronger, get faster that type of stuff. Um, I didn't realize it at the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so unfortunately, while I was, you know, working on, I was trying to get stronger, get better, get better at my gymnastics, because that is one of the things that I struggle with. And I ended up injuring my shoulder and I probably needed surgery, but I put it off. After a year, I did finally go in and get it looked at. And I did end up having to have surgery, had a slap tear with a partial biceps tendon detach it, detachment. Um, and then some tears in my rotator cuff as well. So I had that fixed, had a long recovery from that, partially because I didn't get the right kind of um, physical therapy afterwards that I needed. But during that year of injury and then the post-op period, I, um, I had gotten, I, I ended up going back up to like the 250 range. Um, then I started, when I started getting back to things, I was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with uh, Renaissance Periodization. Um, that I ended up um, getting down to 215 before I ended up with a um, partial quadriceps tendon uh, tear <laughs> that I did have to have um, repaired last November. And... Um, the interesting thing with that is I actually maintained the 215 through my um, initial post-op period and um, after I started physical therapy. But then when I started, when I was released to start working out again, I have no idea what happened, but I did go back up to 250. <laughs> so, yeah. um, Then over the summer and whatnot, I, and I, I got, that's when I got involved with wild health. Um, I found out some things that were going on within my body. Um, and I was working to correct those changes and make improvements and um, doing the things to decrease inflammation. And, but I also went through a period of, um, I just, I didn't quite I lost my motivation, my mojo, my drive for what I wanted. I still wanted the things that I wanted. I just didn't want to, I couldn't get myself to the gym. I was doing good for probably a two month period to get to the gym um, once a week. And my diet was, um, while it was clean, I wasn't necessarily counting anything. I wasn't watching my intake. Um, and then in September, well, actually when, August, when you were announcing that you were going to do the AMRAP challenge, I was like, you know what, I need to do something to get back on track. I need to have somebody that I'm accountable to. I'm going to do this for 30 days and um, kind of take, you know, figure out things from there. Um, and then, and I did, and then I, I won the scholarship. So I did three months of one-on-one -on -one coaching and that has been amazing. So um, I was actually just talking to somebody last night and this morning by a text that, since I started the um, challenge in September, I've lost about uh, 24 or 25 pounds, give or take the day. Um, it's funny because I do this thing where I'll have a huge drop and then I'll like for a couple of weeks, I'll kind of fluctuate within a five pound range. And then I have a big drop and then I fluctuate, then I kind of level off for a little bit and then I have a drop. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Did you see, um, did you see that scale where it goes down like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, overall, it's been a nice little decrease. Yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, so, and then, um, you know, I just, but I have gotten back the, um, you know, the, the, the mojo. being, a, yeah, the mojo, knowing what I need to do and wanting to do the things that I need to do to get where I want to be. Yeah. And I, I so did not want to cut you off on any of that. So I was literally writing notes on that because <laughs> you just literally, un, you opened up a can of worms of like, not only resonating with myself going into your childhood, but also how many people need to hear your story and understand that they're not alone. And, and like going into your childhood, I also struggled with being the girl wasn't necessarily the doctors weren't telling me that I had to lose weight, but my, my, you know, whatever your peers would also sometimes say otherwise, right. You'd get those comments. <laughs> You didn't fit the clothes like your friends were wearing. You always had to wear your own clothes. You couldn't share clothes. That stuff was so uncomfortable because I was also an athlete. I played soccer. I had bigger legs. Like it was just part of being a runner and being a midfielder. Like I was built like an athlete and it was uncomfortable. I also remember looking for diet pills at a young age. In fact, I can still remember, and I share this often, that I remember being four or five years old and literally counting the grapes on my plate and telling my mom that I was only allowed to have five because I was on a diet. Like, I remember that and <clears throat> where those thoughts come from, obviously influences mm -hmm. us. And so I shared that with you. And, and then the second thing that I wanted to cut, because I want to go into a whole bunch of things is this concept of, you spoke a lot about in your twenties, how much you hated yourself. And in that same time, I'm going to be honest, a lot of people probably aren't associating the behaviors you are doing as hateful. You were probably eating whatever you want, doing whatever you wanted, didn't, didn't care, drank whatever you want, didn't care. People would see that as that's just you relaxing. And then you spoke about the change and the shift you made at 36 years old. And you decided, nope, I'm doing this for my kids, but I'm also doing it for myself. And this has got me in like freaking goosebumps right now, because people think that self-love is this like going for pedicures and manicures and massages. And yeah, that stuff feels really good. But self-love is doing the hard shit and saying, you know what? I know that stuff is making me feel really good right now, but it is actually self-hate. And I've got to turn my shit around. I've got to get myself in a better place. People ask about where motivation comes from. It comes from those aha moments. I had one myself as well. And that's why I resonated with this because in my twenties, I was also in a place of self-hate. I just expressed it differently than you. I starved myself from the time I was 19 years old until I was before I found CrossFit. I didn't care about anything but being as small as possible. And I distracted myself from life by focusing on dieting and eating as little as possible. It was a different form of self-hate, but mm -hmm. I hated myself. I hated who I was. I didn't and like, I found CrossFit and I was like, well, first I found treatment, <laughs> which let's be real. That was probably the first step. Um, but, and then I'm like, cause I knew, I knew what I was doing. Wasn't who I was like, I, and you knew that too. Mm -hmm. like, this is who I am. This is, this is not me. I knew that I couldn't break the habits, but then I walked into CrossFit and I, and I remember my, my first competition was before there was the open, there was sectionals. So that was before the open. And I showed up because you just, at that point, you just paid money and you showed up and I'm like, these girls are so fit. I want to be fit. I wanted mm -hmm. that. That was what I was looking for. So just shared that with you and had to start there. So I want to go into a little bit about um, the body weight set point, because I think that's the big thing right now is mm -hmm. you've lost weight in the past. You've regained not all of it, definitely not all of it. So you should be freaking yeah. so happy keeping 200 pounds off is amazing. Okay. That is not an easy feat. All right. But what a lot of people don't understand is that the body weight, we do have a set point. We have a, a place in our body, but it can change, mm -hmm. but it, it takes time for that set point to change. And at one point, 400 pounds was your set point. Your set point. Now your body's comfort zone is likely around that 255. And this is where I think people don't understand the importance of understanding what happens after a fat loss phase. And I'm going to go into that time around 2016, when you decided to really start dialing in your nutrition and you were like, 
feeling really good. You hit 170, 180. This is where a lot of people go wrong is you were probably feeling really good and motivated, but did you find that all of a sudden the weight loss became a little harder? So, yeah, it was definitely harder, especially like around the 200 point. So getting like from 200 to 170, 180 is where I really struggled. Um, and, you know, even initially I was wanting to lose more, but my coach at the time had said, well, let's reverse you a little bit, um, you know, and keep you maintained for a while. And during that process, um, like, I, and I don't know if it was experience or cause, cause she was a newer coach. Um, and I was one of her first clients. Um, but like, I really started packing weight on, like I went from like the one seventies to one ninety within two months. And I, I think at that time, um, and I also, that's around the time that I had become injured. Um, I, I kind of, I was kind of like, F it. <laughs> right. Is- and that's, and, and I, and I stopped coaching, which I, I should have probably maintained and um, continued to work through that reverse and trying to keep the maintenance better, but I did not hindsight. Now I know that's what I should have done and hindsight. Now I know that's what I will do correctly. So. And there's two and there's, and that was the main reason I brought that up is because a lot of people, you know, we're, we're so motivated to get to a goal that we often don't realize how fatiguing reaching it is. And, you know, after being, you know, 200 and something pounds down your body and your metabolism was probably like, I need a break. And, you know, you were kind of probably resisting that. And then you got injured, which also being underfed obviously leads to more injuries when you're driven, especially when you're in CrossFit, like, you know, we'll throw ourselves at the pull-up bar to try and get a pull-up power. I mean, I don't even go into bar muscle ups. That just makes me cringe when I watch people trying to get their first bar muscle up, but, um, not to me, I love CrossFit. So that's not, yeah. me at all, you know, but, um, but that's where I think people have to realize that accountability to maintain is so detrimental to maintaining results when you're in that vulnerable spot, because it, when you're bringing calories up, you want to bring them up in a controlled way, but you also want to see how a person is responding to the more flexibility, what's changing, what's shifting in their mindset, what's shifting in their habits, what's even shifting in their gym habits. Because when a person's motivated to lose weight, when they go to the gym, they're thinking about that. When they skip a workout, they're thinking about that. When they're no longer motivated for that, skipping the gym becomes a little bit easier. And there's so many things that start to kind of, eh, it's okay, it's okay. In the beginning, you don't realize it, but then it just creeps up on you. And and so I think that that's awesome. You know, you've also had a couple of injuries. I think people need to understand that, you know, calories, macros are also not static. Having accountability through your seasons of a shoulder surgery and through a quad surgery may have actually helped you to understand how to eat in different periods of your life. Because let's just say, for instance, you're like, you know what, I want to start training three days a week and I want to start focusing on doing something else for, you know, whatever, you know, being able to learn how to shift your nutrition to change the shifts in your lifestyle is so important for people to understand, including yourself. And so I am very excited. And I know we're starting up a new macro challenge, which I'm like, all right, well, we're getting you in on that because I've already told you, like, we are going to figure out how to keep working with you because, you know, I want you, you know, I I think the hardest thing about being a coach that cares is that I want your success more for you than you want your success. Mm -hmm. And I know that, like, I, I know that for people and I know the red flags and the red flags for me is, Hey, she has regained weight, regained weight twice in her life. This is going to be the time that that doesn't happen. This is going to be the time that you say, the last time I'm going to lose weight is, is happening right now. And so when you get down to 170 again, you know, you're going to be there again <clears throat> and, and you're going to maintain it. Like that's, that's the goal. Like there's no, there's no, we're going to try. No, no that's going to happen. And I'm a person mm-hmm. that solidifies that. So that's so important for, you know, just want to kind of talk about that a little bit. So I want to go into, um, because I did notice even for myself, when I was looking at your first tracker and talking about wild health is that you had had an emphasis on things like, you know, sauna time, uh, cold therapies, um, just things that are very obviously recovery focused that most people that are just going to CrossFit are not doing. You see this from a lot of the top end athletes. You see this in others, in other areas, people that are really into like meditation and stuff like that, but not just from a nurse with two kids, just, and I was like, 
she's freaking dialed in. So I want to talk a little bit about your journey with Wild Health. I, I'm not very familiar with the company. <clears throat> so you can fill us in and um, and where that all came from in terms of, you know, getting that habit started for yourself. Okay. Um, so I became involved with Wild Health. So um, after the games in 21, or oh, well, at the games in 21, uh, Julie Fouché did an interview with the founders of Wild Health, Matt Dawson and Mike and I can never remember Mike's last name. Um, <clears throat> and they were talking about CrossFit Precision Care. Um, and this was going to be starting up. And um, when, so emails came out, you know, after the games. And um, it was like, you know, get on our list, get on our waiting list to, you know, be some of the first patients. And I'm like, yeah, definitely. I want this. Because I've always, so I'm a nurse. I've been a nurse for 25 years. Um, and I've worked in everything from hospice to labor and delivery to um, uh, ER and ICU and, and lots of things in between. Um, and I have found, so traditional medicine has its place, but alternative medicine has its place as well. And I'm very much that person. And so when they sent those emails out, I'm like, yes, I want to sign up for that. So I went to the link to sign up. And then there was, you scrolled down a little bit further and it said, join our team. And I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> so I signed up, you know, I read the requirements and I'm just kind of like, hmm, okay, this is interesting. Um, yeah, Cause they, I mean, they didn't even require like to be a health coach. They didn't even GED or high school diploma is the, one of the minimum requirements. Now they do. And, and then you're L1. Um, so I'm like, okay, this is interesting. So I, you know, I signed up for it and then I <clears throat> got a response saying that um, they recommend that all uh, anybody that is interested in this complete the wild health fellowship. So um, I, I interviewed for that and um, I ended up joining the fellowship. So uh, just it, I'm just curious is, um, you know, cause I, I think it's great, but like what, so with Wild Health, I'm just kind of like, I just pulled up their website for a second. Is Are they actually practitioners or, I mean, it, it talks about genetic based stuff. So fill me in a little mm -hmm. bit about what, what their concept is for the people that are watching this. Cause they're probably like, what is Wild Health? Is it a doctor? Is it, what do they actually do? So, so Wild Health is a medical practice um, and they have physicians and health coaches okay. uh, that provide the care. So when you are starting up with Wild Health, um, everybody that signs up gets genetic testing because that's kind of the basis for their, their, their practice is that it's uh, precision genomic based medicine. So they're doing very individualized care for a person based on their genetics. So everybody gets genetic testing. If you do nothing else, everybody gets that. That's, that's included in your startup fees. Um, then you have the option for a couple of different blood panels. There's a, a blood panel um, that's pretty basic and it's, it's under a hundred dollars to get that. Then they have a complete blood panel, like a, like a comprehensive panel that is around 250 and it's two pages of labs, like front to back single line um, labs. Um, when I went to have my first round of labs drawn, it was, it was 13 tubes of blood. So <laughs> it's yeah. very comprehensive. And then you also have the option to complete um microbiome testing and um, longevity testing. I did not do the microbiome or the longevity at this point. I do have plans to do that. Um, but then you have your, you have meetings with health coaches to talk about what your goals are first. Then you'll have a meeting with a physician and the health coach to go over all of your testing and you get about a 50 page, approximately 50 page health report that gives you everything individualized, like what um, you are genetically prone to, even though you may not be displaying, like, like you have a higher risk for cancer, but you don't have cancer at this point. Um, but you have higher risk for these specific cancers because of your genetics. Okay, cool. So it's like, a, and then yeah. that's what I was and then a doctor or if it was actually just health coaching. That's awesome. Yep. Nope. They, they have both. So, but, um, but like in the, labs, you know, I discovered I had a lot of inflammation going on. Now, granted, it was not long after surgery, but 
um, I also wasn't doing a whole lot. I mean, it was long enough after surgery that I shouldn't have really had any inflammation. Yeah. Um, and then my hormones were kind, they were not great. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, that's even something that I'm still working on. So, you know, I'm working with wild health on things that will improve hormones and actually, you know, cold plunging is one of those things that helps balances testosterone. And that's one of the, the hormones that I'm like, I'm really low. I mean, even for a woman, I'm really low. (laughs) I think women don't understand the importance of testosterone. They just think it's like this manly hormone. No, you need, that's how we, that's how our, that's what helps us be able to reproduce. Like we need that in our body. Yeah. I mean, actually Peter, uh, Peter Atia and Andrew Huberman just did a podcast, not that, or a lot that long ago where Peter Atia was talking about, you know, if, if people realized if everything was in the same form of measure for women, um, there's more testosterone in the body than there is progesterone or estradiol. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, or at least there should be. <laughs> Got it. So that's where a lot of that came from is, is kind of re- is fixing some stuff. And now, so you are, you are now a certified health coach under them, correct? I, well, I finished the fellowship. I just started the um, program to become a cert- a board certified health coach. That's so awesome. I've got six months of required um, lectures and coaching that I'll have to do with recorded coaching and specific things that you have to look at. Um, <clears throat> and I'm, I've applied with them. I've not um, been offered a position or interviewed or anything at that point, but that, you know, I would love to work with them. That's it. But if not, I have backup plans as well. Yeah. So. Well, fill us in. So obviously right now you're starting our challenge again. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, what are some goals that you have for yourself in 2023? It sounds like that's probably one of them. So what about other goals you have for yourself in 2023? Um, so, so yes, I, I want to continue to lose weight, get back down into that 170, 180 range. And, 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 you know, and now it's not for the looks, it's for how I felt at that range and the things that I could do at that range. So um, doing gymnastics movements or body weight movements is definitely a lot harder at 230 than it was at even 215, yeah. um, let alone at 170 to 180. Yeah. Um, and so I'm trying to improve that. Um, I haven't completely decided if I'm doing the open this year, um, just because I feel like I'm not where I'm not where I want to be, and I won't be able to do the things that I want to do. And I'm trying to decide if that is going to be a driver or if it's going to be a demotivator. I feel that. Um, yeah. So <laughs> um, I may do it. I may yeah. do it. I, you know, I've done it before as like just a checkpoint to see where things are, but I kind of feel like I know where things are. And I actually, um, so I did one-on-one programming with um, one of the coaches at our gym, who's also a physical therapist. And um, I reached out to him um, as well as had some other meetings about trying to get some individualized stuff going on to be able to prevent injury. Yeah. Um, and then also get my gymnastics back because like even at 215 I was I was really happy with I don't know how many women at 215 can do things like double unders and chest to bar pull-ups and toes to bar you have a a swimming background I do very strong shoulders and that's you know we don't I mean why it's funny because I was a midfielder so I was I've got an aerobic capacity because since I was freaking four or five years old I was mm-hmm. running up on a soccer field. So, you know, but that's a huge, I mean, people talk about gymnastics. Swimmers are also have a little bit of an advantage on that. Um, so for sure, it definitely does keep you a little bit better off in that stuff. Um, so I, I know this episode is getting a little bit long, but I'm okay with that because it's just so good for the listeners to hear. Um, I want to just kind of shift into, you know, because obviously you're a nurse, you have two kids. Um, how many days a week do you work out? Um, well, I do CrossFit three to four days a week. And then I also um, have a day that I swim each week. And depending on my recovery, that's um, that swim is either like I'll do some sprints or whatnot. If I'm well recovered, if I'm not well recovered, it's just to get in the pool and move. Um, and then I have a day where I try to get out and walk, but I am in Indiana. <laughs> so the weather is... Um, But I do want to start doing um, like two or three zone two days and then probably three or four um, CrossFit days. So you're hitting about five workouts a week of some type. Yeah. Yeah. And it's probably less than an hour. Okay. 
correct? Um, usually right around an hour, but. Yeah, right around an hour. So just like in perspective. And then in terms of like, you know, time consuming things, you know, with nutrition and stuff, how does that fit into your life? Because it's obviously become a routine now. So I think that a lot of people, when they're thinking about weight loss and fat loss, they get so hung up and I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. Um, how do you make that work for you in your life? Um, as far as the nutrition, I do like a lot of food prep. I will do a lot of like bulk stuff so that I don't have specific meals made up and I can kind of adjust things. So if I decide that I want an apple um, that I had not planned and I, I plan and, and I eat a lot of the same things just because that works for me and I don't get bored with it. Mm-hmm. But um, so like I have my whole week planned out for the rest of this week and I have it put into my fitness pal so that I know what I'm eating. But should that change and I, you know, I'm wanting an apple today. Um, I can go through things aren't already mixed up. So I can go through and decrease the number of carbs that I'm having with dinner so that I can fit that apple in. Um, but yeah, I have a, I, I prep in advance and plan in advance. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I have to share this because she's not lying guys. She, Annie is, this is her, her dashboard. She's already got Saturday and Sunday logged in there. So she's (laughs) spot on. I just had to share that because I think people are like, really? You do? Yes. That's something that, that's something that's driven. And that's not everybody, but that's why she's successful. Um, I think that what a lot of people deal with is, you know, especially when you have a lot of weight to lose. And I'm thinking of a client in particular, um, you know, she's had some very sluggish progress, but she's also, you know, like she deals with a lot of cravings. Um, you know, your food quality is stellar. You get a lot of fiber and you eat a lot of the same things, whole foods. How do you deal with those moments when like, you know, you're, you probably have deflating moments where you're maybe hung up on the scale or in the past when you've gotten that feeling and, and you kind of want to just resort back to what I like to call the fuck it mode and you're eating whatever you want. Um, how do you deal with those moments if you have them and, or if you've had them in the past? Um, well, I, I have had the full, full blown fuck it mode mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and that's how I end up back to, you know, where I was, um, sometimes, but anyways, um, so I've, I've, I've learned to forgive myself. So even if I, I blow a day or I have, you know, I, you know, give in and eat the tiramisu or whatever. Um, I, the thing that I've really had to learn is that, you know what, I did it. I gave in. It's okay. It's time to move on and get back on track. Yep. I love that. I, I freaking love that. And I think that that's so important because a lot of people do tend to really be down on themselves and they let one bad day spiral into a whole weekend. And then mm-hmm. every weekend they end up playing the same game with themselves. And so that's yeah. really important. Um, and then in terms of like nutritionally, do you get cravings for things or do you find it easy for you to fit things into your plan? Um, I don't generally have a lot of cravings unless it's that time of the month. I, I do have cravings then. And, and it's not always the things that you think about. Sometimes I'm like, man, I just want, I want a burger. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, so, um, and that's hormonal that's usually what that is. that's your body telling you i need iron i need i need yeah food. that's usually yeah a, and a, and so sometimes i will i will but i i count for things on a regular basis and i work things in on a regular basis so that you know my cravings are mitigated by that because like i have you know lily's dark chocolate chips here that i can uh, throw on my yogurt my, my protein yogurt that i mix up and so then I'm having a treat every day yep. um, and it doesn't, I don't feel like I'm being deprived in that way. So I don't generally have a lot of cravings in that respect. I love that. I love that. So um, I'm, I'm just so excited for you to, you know, this whole year for you in terms of, you know, with your health and fitness journey yourself, with what you're looking to help other people with. Um, and I do think that it's really awesome that you've kind of found, I, I'm glad that we connected and, and you've been working with coach Katie and coach Katie just raves about you and how awesome you are. And you know, and I, and I love that because it's just been, it's been awesome. So um, where can we find you? I know you have, your name is Annie on here, but I'm going to make sure I put the link to your Instagram handle. It's at mm-hmm. act, Annie at active something, right? It's Annie's A N N I Z dot activities with a Z at the, on the activity. Okay. I'm going to make sure I put that in the, uh, in the show notes as well. So people can follow you. Um, any last minute, like, I guess, motivation, any questions or things that you might want to tell listeners in your own journey? Um, you know, what you've experienced, maybe a tip trick, maybe something that if you could go back, anything you want to share with people to kind of close out this episode? Um, actually two things. So 
first, if I can do it from 400 pounds to 178, 170, 180, and then even up and down in there, um, if I can do it, anybody can do it. It is work. It is not easy. There's no magic pill. It is work and it does take time to get there. As much as we love instant gratification, we're not going to get that out of this journey. And two, once you hit your goal, continue with your coach. Don't just stop so that you can get to the point where you're maintaining. And once you're, you know, when you're working with an experienced coach, once that coach feels like you are safe to go out on your own, and there are things that you need to do to show that, um, they're going to let you go. They're not going to have you coaching indeterminately forever um, just that. to try to get money or anything. I love that because that's something that it's, I think people are like, what I know when, and it's a hard time for me. Cause I'm like, all right, it's going to be your last month. But I love when I get to do that. When I get to say, Hey, guess what? You're free, man. You're good. You don't need me anymore. That is the best feeling ever. I hate when I'm leaving a client who I know is still needing me. And I'm like, you need me in your life. I know that, or you, you need a coach, whether it's me or somebody else, you can't do this on your own. And I know that because I know that I still need a coach in, in areas of my own life. So I love that, Annie. So thank you so much for doing this. Hang on for a few minutes. I'm going to close up here. But guys, if you do want to join in on our AMRAP uh, challenge, we are starting another one on Sunday. Um, I'm going to let anybody sign in into it and enter it as, as long as they want to. Um, it is free to start. So um, I'll put the link to that as well in the show notes. And I will go from there. So thanks, Annie, for doing this. And see y'all later.